Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. Uh, everybody, welcome to another edition of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. We hope you guys had a, a great weekend. We got a bunch of prayer requests, obviously, because it's Monday, and so we get all the prayer requests from Friday night and Saturday and Sunday, and so we're going to get to them. I have about three pages of them. We're not going to be able to get to all of them verbally, but that's why we put so many of them at the bottom of the screen there. You can see it on the on the crawl for those of you who are watching on Facebook. But even if you're just listening by one of the podcasts, whether it's on iTunes or Spotify or whatever, you can still join us in the prayer for a lot of the people we're going to be praying for. And you can just believe God that he, you know, hears the prayers of everybody praying. Um, We're going to get to Kristen's prayer in just a moment, but there's something that's on my heart I want to talk to you guys about. And it's the importance of being grateful for closed doors. Now, I've been talking a little bit about how, you know, with Christianity, it's not like all of your prayers are going to get answered. But I really should be saying is, or what you should really be hearing is they'll all get answered, but they might not always be the answer that you think you want. Okay. God knows better than you, what you actually want. Where faith comes in is you have to be able to trust God that when you don't get what you want, when doors are closed, that that's really in your best interest. Okay. When we get what we want, it's very easy to be thankful, right? And nobody likes dealing with rejection. Nobody likes dealing with what feels like failure. And believe me, I know it very, very well. I remember one of my first jobs out of the prosecutor's office, my first, or I should say at a law school, was uh, at a prosecutor's office where I was a prosecutor for about three and a half years. And I would say about halfway through my time there, it, it started just not to work out for a lot of reasons. There were a lot of uh, differences of opinions on how things should be done and, and you know, a lot of politics and things like that. And I just really wasn't happy there. And I remember one day I got called into my boss's office and they just let me go. And I it was mortifying. It was like the end of the world for me. I was so upset about it. the next day I woke up at six in the morning and I do not get up that early. And I get up, you know, much later than that. And I remember just getting up feeling so sick. I actually threw up over it. I was just embarrassed. I thought my life was over. I was 29 years old. This was just the, you know, the worst thing ever. And this was a job I wanted to quit. I mean, I was like, I hated this job. I was just looking for the right time to leave. And then when they asked me to leave, it, it was just the, the worst thing imaginable. And I remember talking to a friend of mine within a, a day or two of that, and he, he's a Christian too, and he happens to be a judge. And he said, Jordan, trust me, this is just God pulling you from a burning building. And at the time, it sure didn't feel like that. But what it did was it provided the impetus for me to start my own business, my own practice, which has been going on for over 10 years now. It's the greatest thing. I remember I was 29 years old, and one day I was driving to my office, and I just said to myself, I don't believe this. I, I don't have a boss. I'm free. I'm liberated. Now, that's something that never would have happened to me if I had stayed in that other job. And I wouldn't have been able to really have the life that I've had so far and and engage in as many different uh, hobbies and projects and and all the different elements that make up my life and really grow as a person if I was still in that job. So at the time, the door being closed in my face certainly wasn't fun, but it was for the best at the time. It's for the best thing now. And, And because that door was closed, a lot of other doors were open. Yeah, I remember, and I've told Kristen this, so I don't mind telling you guys this. Before I met Kristen, I was about to turn 40 years old, and I had been single for seven years. I had a previous relationship seven years ago. It didn't work out, and that wasn't fun when that door was closed. I, I was upset about that for about a month. I mean, really, like, despondent about it, and thank God that didn't work out. Seven years later, before I met Kristen, I had been, you know, trying everything. I was looking at the online dating thing. And then you have your friends who always want to set you up with somebody, which is never a good idea, it seems. Um, and right before a few, right before I met Kristen, I had been kind of following somebody for about a year, not stalking, I don't mean like in a weird way, just kind of like, you know, we kind of knew each other. And we were kind of just, just kind of testing the waters and seeing if there was anything there. And I thought, I thought there might be. 
And I remember she, you know, would send me video messages of her and, and, you know, she would go to gardens and take pictures and say, I was thinking of you. And I thought, all right, well, this is probably what God has for me. And I'll be honest with you guys, listen, I'm just being real. I wasn't really thrilled with this idea. Okay. And there's not, there's anything wrong with this person per se. It's just, it just, it, you know, that special thing wasn't there, but I, I was ready. If this is what God wanted me to do, I was ready to, you know, be a good soldier and, and, and. You can tell us it's not going to work just by the way I'm talking, right? Being a good soldier, right? And just kind of, okay. So, but I said, all right, God, listen, I, you know, thank you and for this opportunity and, and I'll, I'll go right ahead and I'm sure it'll be wonderful. It'll be great. And so about a week before I ever even knew Kristen existed, I had to go, she lived, this person lived a few hours away from me, but as chance would have it, I had to go to a conference down that area. And I said, look, I'm going to be down this area to this person. I said, why don't we meet? And this is right after she was sending me pictures of flowers and stuff. And she said, oh, yeah, I'm happy to meet. But, you know, it just have to be as friends because we I, I just started a new relationship. And, man, I was like floored. I was like, you know what? The heck with this. That took me like it took me a year to get to that point. And now that that rug up, you know, pulled out from underneath me. And I wasn't even that excited about it. I was not happy about this. I kid you not. So I had to go to this stupid conference. I didn't even want to go to. I was only going to it because this, it happened to be by this other person. And I remember the last day I was there was like a two-day conference. I happened to post something on Facebook that Kristen's mother saw, and she showed it to Kristen. And the next day, Kristen sent me a friend request. And thank God I was single. And that's all I have to say. Because if that door didn't get closed and I was unavailable for Kristen, I would be beating myself every day with my own shoe. I mean, I'm not even kidding about that. In fact, in fact, Chris, and I told you uh, prior to even that, like a month or so earlier, another friend of mine wanted to set me up with some girl who lived in Brazil. And I said to myself, and thank God, I think God really put this in, in my heart, said, listen, you don't want to do this because what if you meet the right person and, and you know, you're in this video relationship, this Skype relationship with this other person, but the real right person comes along. And thank God I said no to that. So the point is, look, I'm not here to tell you my life story. I'm just here to tell you that when a door gets closed in your face, you're never happy about it. No one ever likes rejection. Believe me. Okay. You don't like losing your job. You don't like not getting that job. You don't like not getting into the school you thought you wanted to go to. You don't like when you ask some girl out and she says no. Okay. None of us like it. But the Bible says we serve a God who opens doors that nobody else can open. And the other side of that coin is that he also closes doors. OK, that need to be closed. Now, the good news is if you are a believer, OK, if you put your faith in God, the enemy cannot close doors that you're supposed to go through. So when you go through these closed doors that or when you can't go, when a door closes, I should say, your best bet isn't to isn't to be upset and bemoan it. Just say, God, thank you for closing that door for me. And thank you that you have something better for it with me. I'm so used to this now that if I'm driving somewhere where I've been a thousand times and for some reason I miss a turn, I say to myself, God, thank you that I missed that turn because I don't know if there could have been an accident down there or, or God only knows what would have happened if I went down that way. So God, thank you that I missed that turn. And who knows? Maybe it was just me being stupid and I missed my turn. I don't know. But the bottom line is it's not going to help me to get upset about it. And if I had to go down that turn, God would have made me go down the turn. OK, and it's it's true with anything else. So instead of getting upset. Lay it at the feet of God. Just be thankful to him. What God asks us is, is to thank him and to praise him and say, God, my life is in your hands. Thank you that my life is in your hands. Thank you that you have a plan for my life. It's to prosper you, not to harm me. And that everything that's happening is for my good. Because the Bible says all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, for those of us who are called according to his purpose. And my news for you tonight is if you're watching this show and you've accepted the call to salvation, then you're part of that group. You were called according to his purpose. So all things have to work together for your good. All right. That's my message tonight. That's very true. Very true. And isn't it amazing how intricate God's plan is? Sometimes we don't see the whole thing on the surface, but it's so amazing how like you have shared with me, there's more to that story too about how you may not, had you not had that closed door, you may not have, you know, as, as actively um, pursued a relationship with me and everything. So, um, mm -hmm. I, so there's so much more that goes into all of that. Right. Well, the, 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 the issue with that situation 
is, you know, I'm naturally a very shy person. And because there was like this year long build up to it, when when the, the rug was pulled out from under me and I met you, I didn't waste any time. You know what I mean? And it was just right. like I had all this momentum. I was like, I was just that frustrated by having lost out in that situation. And then I saw you and I was like, OK, first of all, I still have this momentum. I'm just going to go over her. And secondly, and I've told you this, I don't mind saying this to our 30,000 followers that you were just are just so ridiculously beautiful and wow. so much so this other person. I thought, well, OK, what God has for me is even better. That's that's the truth of it. And, uh, you know, and then I, I learned so much more about you. And, and I'm just I'm just so ridiculously grateful. In fact, I told you and not that I want to turn this into the um, into explaining everybody my whole lack of romantic history. But I told you that I always <laughs> knew that the whatever whatever the enemy had for me. God had something better. And so and not that it had to do with this person, but with other other women that God, the enemy would say, well, look how beautiful this woman is over here. You know, if, if you if you choose to, you know, wait for some Christian girl, she's not going to be pretty or something. And I knew to rebuke that back then. I said, no, because what God has for me is always better than what the enemy has for me. And I don't accept mediocrity. Sure. And so I knew when I met you that you would be even more beautiful than those other people. And it, there's really just no comparison. And it just goes to show that, you know, you should, we, like I said, we should thank God for the closed doors um, because, yeah. you know, God knows better than what we do. And, and, you know, he can see what's on the other end of it, right? Like yeah. it, for so us, much. we're walking in the blindness, but I could just kind of imagine God just going, no, Jordan, wait, you just don't get it. Look, look, I just can't wait to show you what I have for you. She's over here. She's amazing. And um, turned out to be true. So there we go. Oh, well, I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so true. So true. Um, so thankful for God's intimate plans for us, his intricate, intimate plans. Lord, you hem us in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon us. Lord, sometimes I think to myself when I have the tendency to go back into the habit of worry or go back into the habit of doubt or anything that is not your plan and your design for us to live into an enjoyment and to really get the most out of our lives and our prayer lives and just be so filled up with faith. And then I remember to trust you and you come through every single time. And I say to myself, when am I going to learn how amazing you are, God? When am I going to learn that you have always had me, had all these people who are listening right in the palm of your hand? You have those doors, the right doors to walk through. You have those tugs at our spirit. Lord, there's so many, so many scriptures where you tell us, things about your presence and prayer and, and what we can expect from you, God. It's not some mysterious thing. You lay it out for us. You say that you are near to those who call on you and those who call on you in truth. You are near to the brokenhearted. You are near to us, God. You say, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For all who ask, receive. All who seek, find. And all who knock, the door will be open to. So God, you lay it out for us. There's not a 50-50 chance of you coming through. You come through. And even when we don't understand in that moment, of your answer to prayer. You always answer. Even when it's not what we think, you're always steering us in the right direction. It's always for our good. You always have our best interest at heart. God, thank you. Thank you that you always have our best interest at heart. Thank you that you are always, always above everything we need. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. 
Lord, thank you that you say if you pray and if you believe, you can pray for anything and you will have it. Anything with the caveat that's in your will. If it's not in your will, then we don't want it anyway, God. Mm. But if it's in your will, then we're going to receive it. So God, may we go back to the mindset of asking, seeking, and knocking. For why would we leave that on the table? Why would we not pray? Why would we stop before the blessing? Why not keep pressing through? Why not keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking? For you have promised that that right door will be open. You have promised that we will find. You say, if you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with your whole heart, God, you promise to meet us when we just when we just you've already taken 50 a million steps towards us God you've already died on the cross for us you've already cleansed our sins all you're asking us to do is just turn towards your face and take a leap of faith and you're gonna you're gonna meet us and you're gonna just swoop us up in your arms God it reminds me of a, a child learning to walk. You're, you as our father are saying, come on, you can do it. And we as, as your children are, are, are trepidatious or are, are afraid to move forward. But you say, just come on, just pray, just press in, just believe, just go for it. Just go, my brothers and sisters, just go for what God has put in your heart. Just go for it. If he's told you, he will see you through. He will give you the resources. Now make sure it's him and it's a voice. But if he's told you something, go for it. So like that child, we, we take just that, just that itty bitty step. And even if we fall down, you swoop us up. You catch us, God. You applaud our efforts and you bring us all the way. All we got to do is just step out a little bit. That's all you're asking. You just want some action behind our love for you. Faith. Faith comes by doing and believing and receiving. We've got to believe to receive. That's what I feel right now. We've got to believe to receive. We, who, who believes for what they already have. That's what the Bible says, right? We don't, if we have it, we don't have to believe for it. But faith is saying, and hope is saying, God, no, I can't see it in the natural realm. Even though I can't even see a little, little bit of it, that is a good thing because it proves that you are the one who is doing it. It proves that you are the miracle worker and not me and nothing that I've done, but it's you and all for you, God. So we claim, we stake our claim. We claim your promises. We claim the things that we don't even see one little sign of in the natural. We claim the healing that we don't see in the natural. We claim everything for these people who've, who've asked the Lord, who put themselves out there and asked Lord, we claim it. We stand in the gap for them, God. We claim for our land, the healing for our land, not just for this virus, God, but for all the evils and all the things going on, Lord. We claim your promise. We claim your revival. We claim newness. We claim the new thing that you're doing. Though we do not see it, you are, you are in the spiritual realm working behind the scenes. And we claim that. We claim that and we bring it here we bring it tangibly here by claiming by praising you in the hallways and claiming your giftings and claiming what you have for us god we will not let go we will ask we will seek we will knock and we will see your glory and you are what we are after more than the gifts more than what you can give lord you are our prized possession god you are the one we're after, God. So we ask and seek and knock. And we receive what you have in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. All right. Let's get right to the prayer request because we have a ton of them tonight. All right. Maria says, sister and brother, please pray for me and my husband that God will give us a baby girl. We want our first baby girl. I believe God can do everything, but remember us in your prayers. All right. Look, I don't know that God does uh, gender specific requests, but if that's what you want to pray for, Father God, we pray that you give Maria the desires of her heart. Your word says you'll do that. Now, listen, uh, Father God, if if it's your desire for them to have a baby boy, we pray that they accept that and that they just love that child as well as they would love the girl. But she is specifying a girl and your word says you have not because you ask not. So, Father God, we pr we pray that you please bless, please bless Maria and her whole family in Jesus name. Ilana says she needs our prayers because she's having high blood pressure and frequent dizziness. Ilana, in Jesus name, we Speak to your blood, your circulatory system now and require it to have normal blood pressure, which should solve the dizziness problem. We require your equilibrium to be in perfect balance. OK, Father God, we just pray that you give her complete healing. And Alona, I pray what I think you should do is and I've been saying this to people. I think you should take communion and just receive your healing through you know the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. That's my recommendation to you. Shamla says, please pray for me and my sister for marriage and good life partner. Okay, so I assume that means they're not getting married to each other or to their sister. So I pray for Shamla and separately your sister to both be married to other people. Okay, and I pray that God will give you guys a great life partner and that you guys just have beautiful families together. And, and just, you know, Chris and I talk about all the time how we just, one of the, one of our our core commonalities is how we both always wanted this idea of one big happy family and it's not Chris and I having 12 kids it means you know Kristen's got her family and I have my family and rather than either of us just kind of separating the other one it's more like we're just adding the two families together that's really the idea so when we talk about a big happy family i pray that for for you and your family shamla okay banish says, please pray for my elder son who's far away from family for his education and job. Also, daughter waiting for her 10th result. I don't know what that is. And for youngest son who I couldn't take admission in school due to a financial crisis. How can I manage to get a school admission after the lockdown? I need your prayer. All right. Well, Father God, we pray for Banish and Banish's whole family here, for the elder son, for the daughter, and the youngest son, God, you make a way where there is no way. You open doors that no man can close. You close doors no man can open. We pray that you open doors to school for all these people, despite the financial crisis. We don't participate in the world's economy. So God, please just give them the resources they need, whether it's scholarships, whether it's grants, whatever, uh, so they can go to school in Jesus' name. Johnson says, please pray for my husband, he is suffering from tuberculosis and stomach problems and many weaknesses. We certainly pray for that person. God, we rebuke the tuberculosis and stomach problems. We pray you just renew him. I'm, I'm reminded of that scene in the Old Testament where I think it was the prophet Elijah where God told him to call in the winds from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it caused actual like dead bones to have new flesh on them. And when I see these things about weakness, that's that's what I, I think about praying for. So, Johnson, I, I, in Jesus' name, we call the winds in from the north, the south, the east, and the west to just totally restore your husband, give him a, a whole new body, a whole new system, whole new stomach, and, and newfound strength in Jesus' mighty name. Jose says, Bendiciones, favor ora por problemas económicos muy serios y por mi prostata inflamada. Gracias. Okay. I think that means blessings. Uh, pray, please, for my economic problems and also for an inflamed uh, prostate. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, if uh, that's what I'm praying for. And if it's not that, God, then make it make sure it's the right thing. But, Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray for this person's economic problems for Jose. We pray for his whatever is inflamed in Jesus' name, that it just returns to normal, that this guy doesn't have any more economic problems that he is known as a person of plenty, not as a person of lack, because you are a God of more than enough, not a God of, of lack, not a God of just enough, a God of more than enough. 
And so I pray that your blessings hunt this guy down and overtake him in Jesus' name. Emmanuel writes to us in French and says, my wife has gone blind since 2012 until today. I need your support, man of God. Well, Father God, Kristen and I both support this person. And we pray, first of all, you know, Jesus came so that the blind could see. He healed blindness. And I don't believe that miracles ended 2,000 years ago when Jesus yeah. ascended into heaven. I don't see anything in the Bible that says when Jesus went to heaven, he took the miracles with him. Actually, what the Bible says is it was better for the rest of us for Jesus to go into heaven because then the Holy Spirit could come reside in each of us. And that's the same spirit that raised God from the dead. So I don't believe for a minute that miracles have left us. And so when someone like Emmanuel prays for a miracle, I believe God he hears that. And Father God, I believe you can honor that. And so I pray that since you can give sight to the blind, that you give, bl that you give sight to this blind person in Jesus' mighty name. And I want to start seeing prayer, pray, praise reports from people saying that like impossible situations were solved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zarka from Pakistan asks us to pray for his or her ministry. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, we certainly pray for that ministry. And we pray that it's prosperous. We pray that it brings many, many souls to Christ. You know, Kristen, you and I don't value our ministry by how much money we make at this because we make zero dollars at it. But we always, always value our ministry by how many people we get saved and how many, how many lives we're changing. And so, Zarka, I pray it's the kind of ministry you have. But I also pray that if you, if you have the need of the money, that God will bless you and bless you abundantly. All right, a few more here. Fitzum says, I want your prayer for my financial development and my marriage. Please pray for me, man of God. Here's another one saying, man of God. Guys, you're, Kristen's allowed to pray for you too. It's called Jordan and Kristen pray for you. It's just like a lot of these prayer requests. It's like, man of God, pray for me. Woman, woman of God, please marry me. It's like, <laughs> it does, doesn't work that way. We can both pray for you. So Kristen and I, Fitzum, uh, we both pray for you and we pray for your your marriage and your finances. And I know that finances can really strain a marriage. And so we pray that finances will never be a strain on your marriage. And we pray that you will help other people's marriages by being a financial blessing to them in their time of need. Yes. In Jesus name. That's really key to a lot of these things getting answered. God doesn't just give us things, you know, to bless ourselves. He blesses us so we can bless others. And so when you start praying Praying for God to bless you so you can bless others. That's when you really start to see the windows of heaven open. That's right. Here's another one person, person dealing with eye problems. And so, uh, uh, Purvey's, uh, pray for me. I have glaucoma. Again, Father God, same thing. You, I believe that you came to this earth that, to give sight to the blind and not just figuratively, but literally also. And so, Father God, I pray for this person's eyes that you destroy those glauco the glau glaucoma cells, that this person has perfect 20-20 vision, and that this person will experience such a miracle that other people will know that it must have been from you, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay, here's a few of them. Two of these in a row about pain. Joanne says, I want you to pray for me for complete healing. I like complete healing. I have been suffering from chronic pain for years. It seems to be getting worse. And Janet says, please pray for me. I have inflammatory arthritis for 10 years now. Okay. And I'm going to add myself to that because I have been dealing for like two years with what some, nobody can really diagnose it. It's arthritic like conditions in my fingers. And Father God, in Jesus name, I'm going to pray for all three of us, Joanne, Janet, yes. and Jordan right now. Yes. I like what Joanne said about complete healing. And my hands are a lot better than they used to be. But God, I demand a complete healing from you. You're not a God of halfway or 90%. You're a 100% God. And I thank you that even though I have not yet experienced the full manifestation of your healing, that it's on its way, that it's already done in the spiritual, and it's just now a matter of seeing it in the natural. So thank you for my healing. Thank you for Joanne's complete healing. And thank you for Janet's complete healing in Jesus' name. All right. Cyril says, I'm a Christian from India. She has the following or he has the following request for God, for good health of my family, for my son to get a job as a design engineer, for my daughter to get admissions to a U.S. college for a master's course in physiotherapy for an end to COVID-19. Father God, we certainly pray for Cyril. These are honorable prayers. We pray he has good health. We pray for an end of this COVID-19. 
We pray for his son to get the job that you that you have for him. And we pray for the daughter to get admissions at the, at the right college at the right time in the right at the right price uh, in, and in the right discipline. In Jesus name. Let me see how many people sent things in here. Oh, good to see you, Florida, by the way. Thank you for. Hi. All right. Just a couple more then. Letitia says, "Life in, he lives in Syria and needs prayers at the moment. Thanks. I have a friend that, in a situation named Danny. All right. So, Father God, we pray for Danny in Syria and his friend Letitia, that you take care of whatever situation that is, that you just, you just come in full force and you just overtake them in Jesus' name. And Edith says, I'm from Honduras. Please pray for my family to keep me safe and all of them as well that give care, I think. Oh, I think she's trying to say all caregivers. I'm not sure. God bless. Father God, in Jesus' name, we pray for Edith. We pray for the whole country of Honduras. We pray for all of Central America and North America. And Father God, we couldn't get to all the prayer requests tonight because there's just so many of them, but you see all of them. And you see all these people who have joined us tonight and who are praying with us, like Nyla Zare over there in Florida and Suzanne and a bunch of others. God, we pray that you know, your word says that where any two are joined, you are here also. And when we ask for you on earth, you'll honor in heaven. So God, I lift all of these prayer requests up to you. We give them over to you. We thank you that even though your answer is not always what we want it to be, it's what's in our best interest because we don't always know what we want. And so God, we thank you that you're opening doors that no man can close, that you're closing doors that no man can open. We thank you that you're leading these people down the right path. And we thank you that all of these people are going to experience a miracle. That the reason they have these needs is so that you have the opportunity to work a miracle in their lives so that other people will see this miracle, so that these people have a testimony, okay, and they can be a light. Because I think what this world needs, what you're really trying to do with this ministry is not just give people a, a place where they can go to for prayer, although that's important. But you're trying to make new lights in the world. There's a lot of darkness in the world and you need a lot of lights. I'm just kind of seeing like these like these beads and beads of like Christmas lights all around the world here. Yes. God, I pray all of these people are are lights. All of us have the call in our lives to be an evangelist. So I pray for all of these people to understand their evangelistic calling and for them to bring many, many people to Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Kristen, I'm sorry. I know we went, went long today. Kristen, I'm sorry. I, no, I apologize. but I'm enjoying it. You're on fire tonight. That's good. All right, That's sweetie. Good. Well, listen, can you do us a favor, please? This is the most important part of the show. So please help bring some souls to Christ. Will you please? Absolutely. If you've never received Christ, this is a perfect time. Do you know, do you know if you were to die tonight, where your soul would go? It's very, very important for you to receive Christ because he's reaching out right now to you. So just follow me in this prayer. Dear Jesus, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we're so proud of you. Leave us a message or a comment on the video. We want to know how to support you. Absolutely. All right, guys. Look, I know we ran long tonight. I'm really sorry about that. But, you know, it's a Monday. We got a lot of requests, and I try to get as many people as possible in um, because, you know, all of these prayers are very important to us. And also, again, you can see them at the bottom. If you want to rewatch the video or something and pray for these people individually, we certainly invite you to do that. And also, if you just go up and down our our page, you can see all kinds of people commenting with prayer requests. So feel free to pray for them as well. And feel free to just drop a quick reply to those people. Let them know that you're praying for them. All right. That, That means a lot to people just to know that somebody else cares. All right. And I know this because it means a lot to Kristen and I to know how much you guys care. And and we know, you know, when you send us, please know that when you send us messages, Uh, It really warms our hearts and it helps us out a lot. All right. Okay, guys, listen, thanks again for tuning in. All right. Please like and share the page. It helps us to spread the word of Christ. 
And uh, it helps you also because God asks all of us. He doesn't say for some of us. He asks all of us to spread the good news. And this is a very easy way to do it. Just hit the share button. Kristen and I do all the hard work. Okay, guys, listen, we'll see you again tomorrow night at 730. Thanks again for joining us. In the meantime, please be blessed. And as always, be a blessing. Bye, everybody. joining us don't forget to follow jordan and Kristen ministries on facebook youtube and itunes and remember to tune in next week and every week on tuesdays at 8 45 on wmca the mission am 570 and fm 102.3 Amazing.